Welcome to Podcastville. The church of what's happening now is proud to welcome to the show. Vincero watches. Let me tell you something. Are you tired of choosing between luxury styling, high-end quality, and an affordable price tag? Vincero watches wants to help with timepieces that expertly blend style, timing, and a class with a price tag you'll never expect on a watch built this well. Each collection is bold, modern, and guaranteed to elevate your game. So one of your little buddies over at the uh, Starbucks comes up to you wearing one of the little Apple watches, <laughs> and you'll be like, bam! That's nice, but look at this Vincero I'm dropping on you. Listen to me. This thing, I get watches sent to me all the time. This is the first time I'm, I'm finally becoming a professional comic. I thought it was time to get a watch. And I watched Rocky too. and I remember when he told the girl that if you want to have a good time, <laughs> you got to have a good watch. And that's why I'm coming to you with one of the best watches out there, Vincero Watches. Now, do me a favor, all right? Don't just get a watch. This is going to elevate your game. And just get a Vincero watch. Go check out Vincero at getthewatch.net right now, today. Even better, Vincero's giving all the family the church listeners, 15% off their entire purchase with promo code CHURCH at checkout. It's time to step up your watch game. Even Uncle Joey did. Go check out Vincero at getthewatch.net right now. You're not going to be sorry. And also, to my family over at Onnit, always supplying the best supplements in the house. As a matter of fact, today I went on a little hike, and I did an alpha brain. I walked for an hour. I was sweating like an animal. I went all my points last night. I got high, and uh, you know what I'm saying? So I got to make it up. I got to go to kickboxing tomorrow. <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu Thursday. I got to jump up and down. Anyway, go to honor.com right now and press in. Church. And get 10% off your entire order, whether it's Alpha Brain, Shroom Tech, Hemp Force, Protein, Milkshake. Listen to me. They're not playing games. Go to honor.com right now. Lee, kick that motherfucking mule. It's the church of what's happening now, you bad motherfuckers. Greetings. George Perez here, Lee Syatz here. What's up, Papa? What's up, my boy? You know, man. Uh, just wanted to fucking see you. So I know I'm tough. glad. It's tough. I'm down there. You know, you know, I got a fucked up ear. So I, I try to go to the store because I get sick on the Laurel Canyon. So I puked when I get down there. Oh, and yeah? And I got to go to the store smelling like some fucking vomp. You were puking <laughs> their breath. It's kind of embarrassing. <clears throat> I only go down there once a week, twice a week. You know, besides that, I just stick around and pee. How you doing? You look good. God bless you. You're still here 24 Hell yeah, years. dog. You're banging it out. It's The it's, fucking prison tried to stop you, but fuck you yeah. were like Tupac. Fuck yeah. it. I don't bail, fresh out of jail, California Straight dreaming. Up. Fuck it. One of the fools that I fought in there, too, just hit me up. On a, he hit me up on Instagram. He's like, hey, homie, you know me as this. And we had a little miscommunication. It's like, I'm not tripping and just glad you're doing good. And I was like, fuck, is this a setup? Wanted to meet up and shit. Good. People change. Yeah, no, nah, it was good. He did change. People change. Bro. Yeah. You can't. You can't. That's why I hate these accusations. Look at Chachi now. So you're going to tell me this happened 20 years ago? Is that what they're saying now? Chachi from uh, from Happy Days. And then he had his no own way. show for a while. And, ah, ah, ah. You can't. People change. If they were pedophile, maybe they were horned up. Maybe they co <laughs> did coke the night before. You don't know their fucking situation. Yeah. You don't know their situation. And half of these people don't ever want to come clean. So then you're fucked. <clears throat> you know, just say, listen, I did 22 eight balls the night before. And I was still horned up that day. And you showed up with that little bikini top. And you drove me yeah. fucking crazy. And I figured I'd tell you. And I wanted to squeeze one of your tits and sniff them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was doing drugs, I did creepy shit. We all do, dog. Yeah, I mean, I've done some kind of creepy, creepy shit. But creepy I mean, shit. like, I kind of feel me and you have this sensor where you're like, like, when I take the dress off and she hasn't said a word, like, in 90 seconds, I'm like, hey, are you cool? Or, like, am I scaring you? No, they know what time it is. Listen, <laughs> you don't go back to an apartment with a dude with an eight ball. Not you're knowing. fucking right. Even if you're married, you know, you're going to yeah. show him your pussy. You have to do something. I mean, that's just street level type shit. You come over, you do an eight ball. Don't hit me with some story at 6 in the morning. You got to go. You did that snort. Now you got to show me something. You got to let me sniff your bra. Something. It's that type of body. And that's yeah. the truth. That's that's guy's mentality. That's no, the, yeah. That's the way guy's mentality's always been. You know? It's just something. It's just... I used to bring girls to the crib and have Coke, Speed, 
fucking PCP yeah, and weed and be like, what's up? Do you want to hang out or do you want to go home? And then you tell them the truth. Listen, if we do this, it's going to get ugly. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they'll look at you. Yeah, I'm already fucked up. I'm up here. I got nowhere to go. I live six miles away. I don't have a cab fare. I'm going to have to do something. Cook, suck, something <laughs> to get home anyway. <laughs> Put the lamp up. Fucking horrible. Horrible. What's going to happen now? Everybody's going to get a finger pointed about something they did 30 fucking years ago. You know, we're talking about the other day with Ali about, you know... Uh, They're tripping on Ali? No, 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 no. We were talking about Quincy Jones went off. Talking oh, yeah. Talking about people's business and shit. Did you hear what he said? He said a bunch of crazy shit. You know, bro, it's... Everybody wants attention. We live in L.A., dog. That's what these people do. They they seek attention. So they got to outdo each other. I didn't get fucked in the ass. He didn't rape me once. He raped me three times. Really? <laughs> he came over three times to rape you. Now you got to come out with this shit. You know, every day is always fucking something. This is Los Angeles. These people are broken. We're broken as performers. Somewhere yeah. along the line, we saw somebody getting stabbed. Something fucking happened. Fuck yeah. And uh, it stays with you for a long fucking time. What do you think happens when you give these idiots this fuel you give them? You give these young people a fire. What do you think they do? And you girls and you guys or whoever don't fucking uh, help any of you, you know, with your fucking bullshit love affair. You don't even know these people. And you're going down there with a poster. What the fuck is wrong with you? You don't even know these <laughs> fucking people. This guy's a fucking mammy grammar on the outside. But in today's world, we don't even care. You know, we don't even care. It doesn't really matter. Listen, man, we were talking about last uh, last night. Like Paul Mooney sucked Richard Pryor's dick. It's in one of the wow. books or something like that. Does that make me hate Paul Mooney? No, he's one of my mentors. What am I yeah. going to do? What am I going to do? You know what I'm saying? Like what, what? We choose to pick and decide what's right and what's wrong in our world. Yeah, some people like to go darker. They were just like, fuck it. You know, I always make the point about The Sopranos. One of the most interesting thing about The Sopranos is what? that whenever you watch The Sopranos, your wife watched it with you or your girlfriend. It was that good of a show. Yeah. But he cheated on his wife. Once every two episodes. <laughs> what do you and, mean twice and, an episode? Yeah, yeah. And America watched it. They understood it. They took yeah. it for what he was. This shit's been going on for fucking years. But you know what? If you fell into something 20 years ago, before you open your mouth, contact that person. Yeah. And say, hey, man, 20 <laughs> years ago you said something or did something that I just didn't dig. And, and, and you know, so you, you got changed me. Years? It made me. And you, and you go, listen. I'm sorry, you know, what can I do to apologize or something like that? If you want to go to the press, go to the press. I went to prison for kidnapping. You don't see him crying. I put him in the trunk of a fucking car. You don't see him fucking... <laughs> don't give him any ideas. No, he's a great guy. He's coming on the show, like, in November. He's coming oh, out wow. for fucking three weeks or something. We talk, man. Man, you got your kidnap victim coming? Bro, I talk to that dude. I have to. Yeah. For my own peace of mind, I'm one of those dudes. I just Fuck told the yeah. story about giving Bobby Lenton the money I owed him and sending. I just sent him a check Monday in the mail. What'd you do to Bobby? I borrowed 400 didn't pay him back 20 fucking years ago for a Dang. coke debt. You know, it was like a coke debt that went wrong. I'm one of those guys, bro, that, uh, you know, I fucked up. Yeah. I fucked up. Okay? I've owed before, too. I fucked up. And now, if it was a, let me explain something to you. I owe a 1,000 people $20,000 for coke. <laughs> They're not going to see a red dime. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Those people don't see a red dime. They play the game. They knew what they were getting themselves into. Straight the up. That's the day. You think people didn't owe me money? People owed me money. I forgot. Because I knew. I knew the game I was in. Mm -hmm. You got caught with your guard down. Yeah. Bro. That's what life is about. Sometimes you win. Sometimes you lose. At the end, as long as you break even, you're happy. You yeah. know? I, I seen someone that owed me money, man, and he, I remember it was a QP. Remember Stress Weed? A, a quarter pound was 125 bucks. No. Yeah, well, Stress Weed is that ugly weed that Mexico brought over in the tires and shit. And I used to sell that shit, and I fronted it to some guy that was from my neighborhood, and then he ends up getting caught with it, but I found out he did, and it was just a story and shit. It was a story, yeah. His family moved him back to his, to his old city, and I was just like... Do you have any idea, like, if I sat here with you... And we just sat here. I could probably do a 20-hour podcast of all the people I beat for cocaine. Oh, man. Like beat up or like no, 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 mentally? No. I know what you beat, mean. Like, beat. like, hey, homie, I got like you. Beat. Like I'll be back in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> like what do you mean you're not going to front with the A-Boy? I know you're 10 years. Yeah. I'll be back here at 8 in the morning. I just got to cash this check. It's at my grandmother's house. Fuck I don't even yeah. have a fucking grandmother. You know what I'm saying? 
You 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 catch people at their weakest point, up. and it's an addiction thing. Nah. It's not does not mean you're a bad person. <clears throat> it's a drug thing. No, how yeah. many people fucking? How many kids? How many mom? How many? You know, you get horrible stories yeah. about crack from the eighties when crack first hit. <clears throat> people were selling their kids. Fuck! It was fucking crazy when crack hit, bro. I remember going to a neighborhood that was a weed neighborhood and going back in eighty four, eighty five. And crack came. And seeing vials. And not uh, knowing. I was so... Like, I knew what Coke was. I grew up around fucking Coke. Yeah. But seeing those little vials and going, why are vials on every street corner in puddles Fuck. in New York? And going, bro, what can I get weed? And they were like, there's no weed on this block. <laughs> Ain't nobody sleeping over and here. And then by, by, by 88, 89... You were just hearing some horrific stories about cocaine, and I lived it. I, bro, I, I was up sixty grand, and next thing you know, I was down one hundred and fifty thousand, and my phone didn't stop ringing, Jack. My debts no? were Jesus Christ, and I left Aspen. My debts were insane. Somebody, huh? uh, my friend asked me, "When was the last time you were in Aspen?" I go, "Right after I got separated." I took my car and I, in ninety one, October ninety one, maybe November of ninety one. I got in the car. And I said, fuck it, let me go up to Aspen and just get my head together. And I was living in Boulder. I had a little Acura Integra. So you were living in Colorado, Boulder at the time? I was living in Boulder. And I had left pretty much, I left Aspen in the middle of the night, George. Damn. Like a thief in the night. And yeah. The cops watching me. I owed, <laughs> when I tell you, I owed everybody. I was doing that scam where... You know, and, but I made you a lot of money too. See, that's what people understand. Yeah. At the end of the week, they all made money. Straight up. What I was doing was I was getting an ounce for 800 But in, in Colorado in those days, the ounces were $1,800. Oh, shit. So that's $1,000 to play with right Think there. about it. And Fuck it, yeah. And cut. Oh, yeah. And cut. All I had to do was take a plane and pick it up and bring it back. And I was getting like, he, the guy wouldn't even really wait. He'd give me <laughs> 11 over. ounces, 12 ounces for $9,500. Uh. And I'd bring him guns. And I'd take the Coke and whack it with two ounces. And, bro, by the time I got off the plane, if I had 14 ounces, nine of them were already sold. So if I told you, give me $1,500, i am going to give you back to twenty two fifty at a 9 o'clock. By nine o'clock, you had your shit. But guess what? I knew you were a fiend, <laughs> so I gave you the twenty-two hundred, and then you give me back seven for a fucking cut. Eight, exactly, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. I knew the game, so I get you in the end. So I kept doing this to people, and I was making money, George. And I, George, I can't imagine. I was making money to the point where I was like, I was getting, I was snorting twelve grams a night of the of the, of the good shit. And still counting cash in the morning going, Jesus Christ. Damn. Because if I took that Coke and cut it into grams and sold it. Yeah, it would have been ridiculous. It was ridiculous. I would but, put, bro, I, my Coke with what I was doing to it was way better than anybody else. I, and I left a rock in there. Gotcha. When you gave me 50, I always left 2.5 rock. The rest was shake that was flake and the cut was sprinkled in there. And you didn't know the difference because once you cracked that rock, it would rap. overpower it. I still kept it, so I would throw, I would throw nine on twenty eight. Nine on twenty eight is what? That's nothing. That's fucking no. dirt. And now you get thirty seven hundred for an eight hundred dollar investment. I yeah, could, bro, I could sell thirty seven grams in two fucking hours in Aspen in those <laughs> days. And I had two dudes working for me. I had Carl. Was everybody into it over there? Like, was it the thing? It was the, 1984 was the cocaine capital of the United States of America. Yeah? You know, it's funny. I'm going to end this. I'm going to end this podcast with Smuggler's Blues. And I was telling my wife, because I heard it today. And I was telling my wife that I remember when he mentioned Telluride. I was living in Basalt, Colorado. But every weekend, the guys I lived with took a ride somewhere. Like to go pick up or to... No, 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 no. They would just... They worked construction. One was a garbage man. Oh, I man. got you. They was we mobile. All, we all grew up together. They were just three or four years older than I was. And I lived in the basement. And I would pay rent. And every Friday, <laughs> when they got home from work, we would pick up coolers and we would go somewhere. So one week and we went to Boulder. One week and we went to Rifle. And one week and we went to Telluride. Bro, Telluride at that time was as big as fucking Basalt. Basalt at that time was one street. 
Oh, yeah? That's it. It was one street, and Goldie Hawn lived there. Oh, shit. And fucking her husband, the dude from Escape from whatever, lived there. It was just a small little fucking town. Go to Basalt now, I don't even know. I can't imagine. I heard Carbondale is huge. You know, this is the shit I hear <laughs> from people. But once he mentioned that song, at that time, tell you what, it was a sleepy town. And the rumor was that they were getting the coke in Miami and how they would drop it off in Miami was in the mountains. So they would take a plane from Miami and drop it off in Colorado because Colorado oh. is right in the middle of everything. Yeah. You got Minneapolis, you got fucking Seattle, exactly. you got Las Vegas. So they were dropping it off in bundles on top of mountains and then they were storing it. And they were, the rumor was Telluride was the hot spot for it. Bro, I went to Telluride when it was nothing. I went back... Six years later, the dog, it was fucking huge. Booming. And everybody was snorting coke just from that song. Fuck yeah, it was there. Just from him saying they hide it up in Telluride. Wow. How was it? So we're like, were there like just weed dealers in these small, sleepy towns in the 60s and 70s? And then weed, co- I mean, coke and crack comes in and they just. They start hearing about it, so they start fi- they find some way to get it. Like, how does this? It, how does it like get all over I the mean, country? You, you look at these shows, Narcos, and you hear the numbers of what they were sending in per day. It's fucking ridiculous! They were sending it in by the tons, Lee. I know. Yeah, two thousand ton. With a, no a, container. A town. A ton <laughs> is two thousand. pounds, Yeah, correct? two thousand pounds. That's that's a, a thousand kilos. So give yeah. or take whatever, because a kilo is. 32.2, which is something like that. Like Just over yeah. two pounds, yeah. Right, so 2.2 pounds. That's what a kilo is. So break it up. That, and you were selling that in the United. That was moving. You, you know, when I was growing up, I lived in this area, and it, it runs from 7th Street to 88th Street. Just in the 88th Street area. I remember six dealers <laughs> that were doing great. Yeah, I know a couple stuff. And nobody competed with nobody. Everybody was making money. In now, days. did everybody have like their own block and shit? No, 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 no. Everybody had their own phone number. Oh, okay. And you called them and they met you. You went yeah. to school with them, whatever. You know, you had gone to high school with them. And it was crazy yeah. how quick it took over. How quick people became. Because once Scarface came out. It just fucked the game up, Jack. <laughs> Everybody wanted it. Oh, yeah. my it's God. It's like when Colors came out. Gangsters yes, were yes. like, we're going to do that now. Remember when Colors came out, the fucking cops went to the movie theaters? <laughs> yeah. The first weekend. I'll never forget. I was out on bail. Look at the date of Colors' release. It yeah, had to be Colors before. It shit. had to be before August of 88. Okay. I think it was. I was out on bail, and I went to see that movie. And the arresting officer in the case was playing security at the movie theater. No way. And when he saw me at the movie theater, he made like a face like he was a tough guy. I'm like, fuck you, punk. I got this case beat, bitch. Yeah, but that movie, Pac-Man kicked April 29th. I was 88, yeah. I was out on bail, ready to get sentenced for kidnapping. Oh, wow. Ready to plead. And the guy, the arresting officer, was working the detail at the movie theater. I went to... What'd you think of the movie? Colors? Yeah. I liked it. You know, we had him on the podcast. Uh, uh, Willie Barsana just had him on the podcast. Oh, yeah? The cop that... that Craig was, Hodges or the... The cop that that was based off of. Oh, the real one. Yeah, the cop that... What's his name? Rode around with to do the, the film. The older guy or the young guy? The Sean Penn character. Okay, Sean Penn, yeah. Sean Penn's character. We that had was- him on Felicia's podcast six years ago because he was friends with a dude Felicia was dating. Okay. He was really interesting. You know, what he was saying, what was going on in Yeah, Rampart well, he was a... Days. Cr- oh, fuck yeah. <clears throat> Remember when Fly used to live over there? No. Fly lived off of Rampart and Temple. And we used to kick it over there, and it was fucking... It was scary. No, for me to say it was scary, it was scary. Like, everybody was shady. When the cops are shady, it makes the whole hood shady. Because you got to battle the cops now and then all these other shady motherfucking enemies you got. I have never, ever, like, L.A. being itself scared the fuck out of me. Like, when I came here in 84, I was 21 years old. And I wow. went to Washington and Vermont. My uncle still has a bar there on that corner. What is that, like, downtown L.A.? That's right before downtown, right okay. before you're on the way to the courthouse. Oh, and shit. in 84, that was a fucking zoo. And I remember, you know, the biggest deception that you have 
especially growing up in New Jersey of California, is everywhere's everybody's a beach. Everybody's <laughs> yeah. Everybody's got a bikini on. <laughs> yeah, everybody's and then surfing. you go to fucking, and then you go on Burbank Boulevard <coughs> and drive on the other side of Lancashire. It's still 1964. Bob Hope is walking those streets. Uh, if you get on Burbank, you know, like if you get on Burbank Boulevard by Lancashire and, and you cross uh, Burbank, Bruce Lee walked those streets. In like, those days? That's all martial arts fucking the, on the corner. That either they closed it or they're about to close it. Gene Lubell is partners with that martial arts supply store. It's the oldest martial arts supply store in California, supposedly. Oh, that one shit. On the corner, right there. We can walk from here. All we got to do is walk to Lancashire and walk up across a block and have there's a Kempo school next to it. It's a, um, a Mexican Kempo school. The guys are great, but they teach in Spanish because everybody in that school is basically Spanish. Oh, okay. They're That's, like, fuck They're going to knock that all down. But if you walk up that block, you're like, bro, this is 1940 here. Like, when I came out here and I saw Washington and Vermont, I'm like, what the fuck, California is this shit? <laughs> Where's the palm trees? You, when you get off the plane in Miami, there's fucking palm trees everywhere. You got on the fucking bike. When I was a kid, I used to land at night. And just to drive, the smell, the sea air, the ocean, you're like, Jesus, I'm in the fucking ocean here. Where's Aquaman? You know, when you get to L.A., you, you, you land in LAX, and you get off, and you make those turns, and you're like, what the fuck have I done? Wow. The first mile is beautiful. They got palm trees outside of LAX. But once you get to National and fucking uh, Century, that shit, that McDonald's on the corner there, <laughs> that that becomes real. They got and you know what's crazy though? The craziest strip clubs are right by the airport. That's Dad, when you're gonna get your dick sucked. Everybody I, wants that last transportation. You know, that, I'm almost home, bro. Right there, I, I was I was sitting there one day in an Uber or a cab or. And I'm at a light, and I'm like, bro, look at this down here by the airport. They got thousands of fucking uh, things and strip clubs. Yeah, it's the layover. Imagine the layover. Yeah, if, if your plane gets canceled, you know what? Fuck it, take me over there to the fucking bitty titty and shit. Yeah, man, strip club DJ lately has been fucking crazy, Joey. Like right now, all these clubs, dude. Trump has affected strippers. Like all the strippers now, they gotta pay taxes or become private contract independent contractors. So now they're independent contractors. It's like, no, we don't work for them, we just borrow this facility. You know what I mean by that? No. Okay, so like if you're a girl, you can come in and be like, All right, what's your contract? I have to pay this much if I make that much. And I had to work at this time, or, or the later I show up to work, the more percentage I got to give. So they're like, all right, fuck it. I'll show up at 11 o'clock or 6.30. I'll pay 25% and whatever they make. So now it's their own company. They're their own company now. So they can report whatever they want to report because we're just renting out the facility to them. All we do is charge 25% for you to come and work here. It's like Uber. Yeah. Right, so how does that affect you being a part-time? It's kind of like, uh, I mean, it doesn't, it's actually better for me because other clubs would be like, hey, 50% off the fucking top. Really? I don't give a fuck, For bitch. you? No, for the club. So say a girl makes a thousand bucks. If you make a thousand bucks where I work, 20%, you, you got to pay 200. If you work at another club, you got to give up four to 50. So with me, that we take out less, but they don't have to stay or do anything. And uh, like these other girls, they have you on schedule. It's like, look, you work here five days a week. The girls now, they can just be like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm only working two, three days a week. I'm a private contractor. I show up when I want to show up. I'm paying you to use your facility. You know what I mean by that? So... Yeah, man, like it's been off and on. And when you DJ at a strip club, it's it's kind of like coaching. Like you, you and this girl, you get close together. You work with each other. Now I'm working with chicks that want to run their own scams that they run at other clubs and shit. That whole like, hey, it's a two for one. I forgot to tell you. Like, hey, what the fuck? What do you mean you forgot to tell me? You could have charged that guy double. You know what I mean? So 
It's affecting the pocket, but it, it it's cool. I is mean, the strip club industry still as popular as it was? I mean, some places it's always going to be horny motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's always fucking yeah. crazy people. Now, but look at they got networks now, Joey. Like, 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 say me, you, and Lee were pervs that go to strip clubs. They go to this network. I think it's called Hit It and Quit It, and uh, they tell you what. Cl- I look. If you go to that club, ask for that girl. And like, there's an administrator that they have to meet you at a club to let you in this fucking like network. And they're always at my club. They even they gave me a good review. They're like, the DJ there is cool, man. He don't trip. Because other clubs will trip if you grab the girl's titties on the floor and shit. Or grab their ass. Us, we don't give a fuck. We're one of the oldest clubs. Go to this web page, Let's check this out. Um, no, we can't get in. You have to be part of them. Doesn't what you can't pay eight ninety nine to join? No, the club? you gotta meet the. You have to meet. You have to be a customer at the clubs that they're at, and they meet them. So okay, so I walk into a strip club, and I'm there for twenty minutes, and all of a sudden, some dude comes up to me and says, "Do you want to be part of a network?" <laughs> no way. He's gonna have to notice you at all kinds of clubs. Like you know what? I should hit up my buddy. Will. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. No, 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 no. I don't want to meet nobody. No, you're not gonna meet. Him. Just, I don't want to meet nobody. I don't know nobody. I don't know nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay. So if a guy sees me at like three or four clips, he's like, "Hey, I noticed you've been to a lot of strip clubs." Yeah. 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 Cause Cause I what's up, money? doggy? He's like, "Yo, man, we got this little network and shit. That's this, creepy. So you can save money. Check it out. This club does seven full new dances on a Thursday. This one does five. This one does, you know what I mean? Like, you get all the deals. Every club is trying to outdeal each other. There's fucking clubs in City of Industry that are giving you four lap dances for 60 bucks, Joey. Where that should be four times four, 160 you'd make at my club. So they're, they're, they're fighting for a dollar. Right? Fuck it, yes. Yeah, they're fighting for a dollar like everybody else. That means they're giving hand jobs. Oh, they're doing. That means they're fucking freaking. I used to remember Rudy used to have a room. He had a really fucking good room, Rudy, for about three months. On a Wednesday night, he had a room in City of Industry. I'm, I'm, it's coming you to remember? me. Yeah. And it was right in front of the strip club. It was in front of the Hawaiian theater. It, it was in front, no, 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 no. It was in front of like Deja a vu. badass strip club. I think club. it was Deja Vu or Sin. <clears throat> yes, it was a badass yeah. high level. If there's six chicks working, seven of them are throwing heat. Yeah. Nobody's pregnant. You know, everybody's. Joey, back. that's changed. There's like 40 now. 40 in there and like they're all throwing heat. heat oh they're throwing more throwing heat. heat at this place guys let me tell you a fucking <laughs> fucked up story every time I went down there I was broke as dick but I know you I know you came with the sack cause I know you wheeling and dealing no 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 no. no. listen to me in those days at my addiction at that point was everything I had I kept from myself <laughs> All right. I'm not, I don't even want to see your titty for me. I gotta give you a line. Yeah. My addiction was out of fucking control, and I was broke ass. And Rudy would call me, and he'd give me the small forty, and they fed you. Oh, fuck. they fed you like a nice fucking meal. It was like an Irish pub. It had a little stage. Oh, I remember it okay. now. All right. So, was it Casey's? Something like something that. like that. It was a what forty bucks on a Wednesday, Tuesday night, night off. It was an early show. It had to be in. It had to be done by nine thirty. So, because <laughs> <laughs> you know he has to go to bed. So he had to go to bed. Something <laughs> happened. So I just start dating Terry. Oh wow! We're dating about seven months, and Terry ain't stupid. She notices that when I got gigs, I come home busted. So she's like. Where's the fucking money at? <laughs> so this one night she goes, you know what? I'm gonna take a ride down there with you. <laughs> oh wow! So she takes a ride down there. With she me. drove or you drove? She drove. What am I? I had a bicycle. <laughs> I had a fucking bicycle with a missing tire. What am I? A fucking you know? And I get down there with her, and there's 14 people in the audience. Excuse me. And the next thing you know, <laughs> something happens. <laughs> <laughs> something happens to me. 
some drunk dude is really digging me. I'm working dirty. <laughs> I'm working dirty. And we really don't like when you work dirty. No way. And I'm fucking just going crazy on stage. This had to be, guys, 2000. This is 17 years ago. Oh, fuck. Well, I'm telling you guys, I didn't have a pot to piss in the window of the throat. I was minus 10,000. I was in deep debt. And I get there, and I'm picking up the small 40 from Rudy. But this dude says, don't get off the stage. And he takes his wallet, and he throws it up at me. Wow. And I grab it out of the air, and there's a bathroom right next to the stage, right? So I do my material, uh, and the guy's drunk with his friend uh, and a bunch of people. And I fucking go, walk, I get off the stage and say, thank you very much. And they go crazy. But right there, I go, hold on, I got to pee. And I go in and pee, and I open up the wallet. And the guy's got, like, fucking nothing but yardsticks in there. Damn, drain that bitch. And I took, like, fucking two or three of them, and I put them <laughs> in my pocket. And then he met me and gave me a hug, and I gave him back his wallet. I made believe, like, it was in my back pocket where he was on stage. Yeah. I go, oh, shit, that's right. And I gave it to him, and I kept saying, don't open that fucking wallet. <laughs> don't open that wallet. And yeah. I looked at my wife, and I go, we got to get out of here. And then we got in the fucking car, and we got out, and nobody ever said nothing. Rudy never said nothing. Nobody ever said nothing. <laughs> did, did she trip? Because you came home with a lot of money? Bro, in those nights, you know, in 2000, 2001, let me be honest with you. You know, when before you come to L.A., people always say to you, you're going to have to get a job as a waiter. You're not going to make any money. Let me tell you something, guys. I got a job here in L.A., and for the first six months. But I think I was rocking and rolling. If I would have been a normal person, like no addictions, just paid rent, car payment, insurance, I could have lived here yeah. for six months. I'm not lying to anybody. No? As a comic. As a stand-up comic, because was, there was a ton of commercials then. The first commercial I booked, I blew so much money, bro. I made so much money on it in seven or eight months. And then I you didn't invest it, it? You didn't hold it? You didn't I save invested. it? I invested. I invested in <laughs> Colombia. <laughs> That's what I invested in. I invested in Pablo Escobar, Inc. <laughs> Every dollar of that fucking... It was, it was the first Taco Bell with the dog. <laughs> Bro, oh, I, was, wow. I was getting checks. I, I, was, I didn't even have a bank account. I lived at Whitley in Hollywood Boulevard, the check cashing place. I knew wow. all the people in there. They would just cash my checks all hours of the night. Wow. But the other side of that coin is that people always will tell you you're not going to be able to make a living. Let me tell you something, guys. When I got here, I did comedy seven nights a week. And I'm going to tell you something else. I made a minimum of $25. And okay, you used to look at me going, Joey, that's no money. But you said there was no money. Because after three or four months, like I got here January of 97, but by December of 97, I had an apartment. Wow. I was making a living off $15 checks from the comedy store. The improv gave you seven fifty. <sighs> the Laugh Factory gave you 25 on Latino night. And wow. everything else was from Jeff Garcia, Willie Barsena, Felipe Esparza. Uh, the kid who became a born-again Christian had rooms. I mean, the, uh, the kid who still books rooms. Great kid, I forget what his name is, Sebastian Satina. Yeah. Everybody had three rooms. I used to hook you up too. Yeah, you had, but this was when, this let me tell you something. They're begging for comedy up in Northern California, right? Oh, now. yeah. In between Los Angeles and like San Jose, they're going crazy. You know why? Because 20 years ago, we were up there every other fucking month. And some reason, every promoter stopped promoting up there. Damn, they got Rogan crazy. just added like a third show in Fresno. No way. Yeah, like that. The dog, the dog it's crazy. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to do. Fresno, Bakersfield. He's, mm. Bakersfield, that's one of my best shows every year. That's wow. like, the I, brewery is the best show I do every fucking year. One of the best shows of the Bakersfield year. Bakersfield is weird, though. The like, people there, they look like they're on X Games and like X Mess, Files. They are. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> they laugh, they come out, and they have a great fucking time. Yeah. That fucking brewery is right up there in Bakersfield. There was a place out there in prison that is like they're <laughs> no, with oil deal. Will you buy oil deal? Dog in prison, those motherfuckers are like if the hills had eyes, people. They walk around with no teeth, fucking filthy. Oil deal. You ever been to oil deal? I don't know. California? Yeah, it's it's in Bakersfield. 
bro, I've been to some places in California that have been imaginable, unimaginable to shoot. I but, shot a I shot a Snickers commercial one time. Uh huh. Three hours from here, I had never seen anything like that. In my life. <laughs> the hotel was an hour from the set, guys, uh. and it was nothing but flat and windstorms, and it was nothing but fucking dirt, guys. When we were sitting in the trailer going to shoot, it, it was like the creepiest environment. I, I was out there. Like, if was I it like a desert? You, it was somewhere fucking crazy. Probably like in India. I've or... been. There's a casino that Montoya used to book years ago. Montoya, remember when they had the management group? Yeah. I think before you went away, they, they when you got out, they, they had and he got clipped. Something happened over there. His management group booked a casino, and it paid. It paid great money. Was it in New Mexico? No, it was uh, no. It was four hours from here, but something again. Casino Marengo. No, it was North. Okay. And, and they, I met. I hear it once a year. Somebody goes, "I'm doing a show," and I'm like, "They still do shows there because the it was Chunk Chancy. It was a four-hour drive, and the last hour was hill. You don't see, no. You don't see nothing. Oh shit. <laughs> Lee, you don't see nothing. <laughs> Just old Indians. And all and of a sudden you see a light and it's like uh, the Mad Max. You know, like the Mad Max movies at night, how oh, yeah. they're fought in the Road Warrior. Like out of the distance, you see like lights, like people with torches. Yeah. Like that's how the casino was out there. Well, I think it's probably like when you're driving onto the reservation, right? Yes. I mean, the last hour, dog, you better have a full tank of gas and you better not be <laughs> hungry and you better not need to shit. Because <laughs> there is fucking nothing. Uh, yeah, they got a spot like that now called the Chunk Chauncey. Uh, Andre Covington. Is that his name? Yes, he's always... Bro, he's I, cool. Shout out to Andre Covington. Hell yeah. He was booking me... And that's 20, another one? Four, 20 years ago. So, like... Andre Covington has been... Excuse me. I've been here since 97. I think Andre Covington was giving me work in 98. Oh, he wow. was a DJ up in Fresno. Still one is. Of those places. He had the radio nation. You know, he had the comedy nights. We were always up there. I just saw the guy in San Jose, the coach. He wanted me to do Cinco de Mayo. I'm already in Tempe. Okay. But he, he asked me. He goes, we're doing a benefit. And he'll call me for the next one. He used to book something in Bakersfield, the yeah. town next to Bakersfield. That was one of my favorite drives. When I had a gig up north, I knew one thing. I was going to get good tacos because it was a <laughs> place off the, off the off whatever north. The ninety nine or the five something, the five north. You go, you drive forty five minutes out of here. You see that taco truck on the side of the road? That's the one. Little chubby Mexican dude and his wife has always has the thing around their hair. <laughs> I don't know how many times I stopped in there over the years. We used to do all those rooms. I remember driving up there with Freddie Soto. Oh shit! To do a, a room that paid. Like Merced. Kind of, well, yeah, like we would do that. That was your. Once in those days, I was going up north three times a month, and it paid good, right? And it was it like, paid great. You would drive. Mike Marino had a room up there. Mike Marino, five hour drive deep into the heart of Texas. You got a hotel because it was fuck. And uh, yeah, you ain't driving back. Yeah, you ain't driving back. Fuck no, 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 that. No, 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 no. So right. yeah, once you get to Cal, it's weird because when I first came to Cali, I was like, okay, if I could book myself in California, I'll just zip into L.A. And this was way before there was fucking make a turn in 30 <laughs> miles. Yeah. This was way before that shit. This was, so you had was on a, a Thomas guy? You had to use a Thomas guy to measure it out. And I remember like fucking going, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, I booked myself in Northern California. <laughs> but but uh but this is still five or six hours from seven hours from California, like where yeah, I need to fuck be. That. It's a long, it's a big ass state, people. California is a fucking long drive. No, the Texas will kill you, but California is a long fucking drive. Yeah, it's way more traffic, more congested, and you run into crazy people the farther you fucking leave. No, you know what I mean? Tell you what I think, bro. Here's what I think. I think that driving is great. I love driving. I, I love driving. You know, for years I fucking drove. I busted my hump in a fucking B210 Datsun. 
I had a couple cars on the fucking road. But I will tell you something. That no matter what your plans are, there's one part of L.A. that as soon as you get into L.A., bro, you could be 10 hours ahead of schedule. And L.A. will fuck your shit up by five hours. Oh, yeah. Like, I still remember one night getting a, a doing a Sunday night show and having to shoot in L.A. from Tempe. And I had to be on the set at 8 in the morning. You came from Arizona over here? Listen to me, dog. Damn. I fucking drove. I got off the stage at Tempe. At what, what time does the feature get off? <laughs> 8.30? And I w- went to a pizza place to get a slice, and I hooked up with a chick. <laughs> and we went back to a hotel. Can you believe this shit? This only happens when you're going to shoot a fucking TV show. With yeah. Jack. This never happens when you have the day off the next day. <laughs> no. I remember going, I'm paying for a fucking hotel room. I could have stayed in the fucking condo. Why did I even give back the fucking key? I can't even take it back to the condo now. <laughs> God damn it. And I left the room at midnight. Do you know I um, I barely made it to the set in Tempe, Arizona? Fuck. And you're all drained, because, bro. I got to this. I got to temp. I got to L.A. at six. I was forty miles out of L.A. It took like three fucking hours on a Monday morning. That's happened to me before, man. I remember. You remember they used to have those gigs in El Centro. Or like Brawley? Yes, El Centro, so, yeah. right by Mexico. Fuck yes. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so we go do one out there, and this is, I'm fresh off the MTV Your Mama fucking show, so I got, I'm young, dog. I got these young chicks out there. I end up hooking up with the promoter's daughter. Didn't even know. She was fine. Go back to the room, fuck all night. And I had to come home, and I think I had to audition. I I, I had to do a uh, local comedy jam for Mike Robles at the Ice House. And uh, I was just a stand-in. Somebody bombed, and I got to get on. It, it was, uh, I don't want to say his name, you know what I mean? But uh, I think this is 2003, 2002, right, when they filmed local comedy jam? Jesus Christ, I don't remember. So. How many times were you on local comedy jam at Que Locos? Bro, I barely got on those shows. Yeah? They hated me. <laughs> they hated me, dog, on those shows. I could not. In those days, I was too dirty for a Spanish audience. They were still Catholic, right? You, they were with the Piazza. With the Piazza. Now, nah, you kill. No, 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 no. <clears throat> you look at that audience. You look at that audience and you watch my face sweating. Cut cut to it, Lee. <laughs> Piazzo comedy slam Joey Diaz. You watch this. He just made it look. They, if there was 600 people in there, 300 people hated me that night. And 100 were just sitting there going, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah. Alex Raimundo just went up there and did a great job. And uh-huh. He else. danced with the mask on. Something. Something had happened. <laughs> and I went up there and just ate a bag of dicks. No way. I love it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. I wouldn't lie to you. Oh, you want to watch another one of the picture? No, no, no. What, what are we talking about here, Lee? Pass a comedy you slam. Want Joey bong D. Hit, Not really. Man, that bong hit brought my toothache back. <laughs> I'm telling you. That's the bong of duck. <laughs> Fuck, that shit is strong. What are you doing now? What do you mean, what am I doing? I'm sorry. I am so comedy slam. No, I don't have it. Wow, they took it down. No. Oh, that's the Gabriel one you did, though. You were sweating bullets in that one when you was wearing that suit. Oh, please. That's the most comfortable, I've, most uncomfortable I've ever been. Before. Yeah, you just look sweaty. I was just really shocked that the that the guy gave me a shot. Oh yeah, so doing Showtime was way different from the Comedy Central one. I was a complete different person, man. When I did, oh fuck when yeah. I did Payaso Comedy Slam, I did not give a fuck. <laughs> All right, see you if you can chubby. find me. You was Just chubby. Let's, let's start it from scratch. Let me write it out for you. Well, no, no I, I know we're here. Let's go Joey Diaz in capital letters again. We're adults here. Use capital letters, for Christ's sake. I, I promise you it doesn't matter. It, it, just, do, please, 
Why do you gotta fucking piss me off all the time? He puts everything up there like a fucking half a mook. <laughs> Joey Diaz. Nice. Capital letters. J O E Y. Capital D I A Z. Come on, let's go. So you use Joseph? No. Joey Diaz. Capital. Payaso. P A Y A S O. Comedy Slam. That's it. All right. That's Why you gotta I aggravate? Exactly me? the last time. Word for Scan word. down. Scan <laughs> down. See what else they got on there. Why you gotta aggravate me? <laughs> <laughs> it ain't one thing, it's the fuck another. Oh my god, Jordan. <sighs> Look at the laugh factor. Oh shit, I'm on that one. Getting 10 points from my action. Maybe you go to the trailer. <laughs> Go ahead, put the trail on. I guarantee I'm not even in the fucking... Down, 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 the other way. Right there. There you go. Watch. Click that watch. I guarantee I'm the least on the fucking trailer. <laughs> watch. They, they fucking hated me, dog. They fucking hated me. It was hysterical. I mean, I had a good time. All I gave a fuck about was the two down. No. The check, huh? I had to make it back to LA by one to get my fucking coke. Oh wow! And we were where did we do that? Son? In San Bernardino. San Bernardino, and w remember they gave us a hotel room, and you yeah. guys there was an after party, and then they gave us the Showtime wine bottle. Like you what the fuck? I don't give a fuck about that. You didn't. I gave that to somebody, and I got in my car, and I got that two thousand <laughs> cash. That was part of my deal. I want cash. Don't even think about giving me a check. I sign paperwork, <laughs> <laughs> but give me cash. Go ahead. On the next Laugh Out Loud. Ladies and gentlemen, your host for Payaso Comedy Slam, George Remuto. Welcome to the Payaso Comedy Slam. We are your payasos. For those of you that don't know, payaso is a Spanish word, which means clown. We know. And for those of you that don't speak Spanish, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Time to learn, fuckers. <laughs> By the way, just so you know, we have we have gone all across the country, and we're bringing you people from all across the country. In the first of a series called the Payaso Comedy Slam, you're going to see some guys tonight from Los Angeles, California. Please make welcome Mr. Eric Griffin. A lot of fools blew up on this, though. Ugly chicks should not be able to dress slutty. Walk over like, hi, ma'am. Hi. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was standing over there and uh, just wanted to let Boy, you know. Look how that, long Eric uh, Griffin's been around. Yeah. yeah. Now he's on a TV but show. Your uh, vagina, <laughs> boo, it's about to drop. It's <laughs> I think it's fucked up. Everybody makes fun Edwin. of Asian Edwin. Vegas, he's a resident like, comedian. Oh, that's not right. <laughs> yeah, but ho, 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 ho. That's hilarious. <laughs> Latinos, you make fun of Asians. Don't act like you don't. Learn how to drive it, stupid. <laughs> Asians, we can't drive. That's true, but at least we have car insurance. <laughs> Don't get mad, remember? Oh. How many fucking one nine? Yeah, no, you don't have to put this on no more. Just turn this up. Fast forward it to Joey. He's no, the no, last. No, no, no. <laughs> see this shit. Now I'm starting to get depressed and shit. <laughs> yeah. They put me on like last. Go ahead. I guarantee. Yeah, fast forward it. Fast forward. He's after Jeff. After Rick. Oh, they put me. I'm telling you. There he is. Look at the size of me, dog. Look at the fucking... No, no, just... Look at George Perez with yeah, the velour jacket. <laughs> Slow it down. What's the... Dang! Look at the size of me. Don't blow Look at the size of me, Lee. When was the last time you washed your nuts? When was the last time you... Were... You took time. You know what I'm saying? Scratch your nuts. Take a whip. <laughs> you See, you No, so, that yeah. was somebody else's <laughs> joke. Bringing sexy back. Now it's somebody else's jokes, dog. I'm uh, telling you, you have no fucking idea. They hated me. <laughs> I went up there and I was still hammered from the night before. Like I, it was Thanksgiving. It was the Friday after Thanksgiving, Black and I was Friday. I was still fucked up from the night before. Like yeah. I had gone. Like I went to bed like at seven in the morning. When I woke up that day, all I thought about was that two thousand fucking hour. I didn't care about my material. I didn't think the thing was gonna make it to showtime. I thought it was just a blowjob. I didn't yeah. give a fuck. It's not gonna make it. But to you showtime. did show up early. I remember you was like, I shouldn't have fucking came early. You know, it, we had been lied to so much at that time. You know, by that time I had shot fifty things that were gonna be on HBO and Showtime. 
Wow. By the time I shot Payaso Comedy Slam, how many fucking things do you think? Did, did you see what I put up the other day? Raffaello's Pizza? Did you see that video I showed mm -mm. and put up? No, no I saw that. I, saw I the put the something the other day on Carl's Facebook. Junior one. Raffaello's Pizza. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, I shot 80 things that the dude already talked to the dude at HBO. They were going to do any of eight episodes. We're just waiting. Come on down. Do the first one today for free. Or 200 or 300. You worked all day like a fucking slave. Fuck. And then three months later, you got a call that... Do you know anybody at YouTube? What are you talking about? <laughs> YouTube. What are you talking about? You told me you knew people. Next thing you know, your stupid thing is on fucking YouTube. You did 22 years ago. You know how many fucking things I did that were supposed to fucking be on CBS and NBC? And you have no idea. In fact, I'm supposed to call this actor Ed Quinn. Me and him did a, a fake Law and Order during the strike. The guys from Law and Order SVU got together and shot a miniseries. And you passed the picket line? And they were supposed to. No, we shot it for some. I don't know. I think we shot it for free. It was free. Oh, okay. No matter with you, you know, across the picket line, I'm a union fucking delegate. <laughs> yeah, this sounds like danger, homie. I'm a union fucking delegate. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird that we shot, and that was going to be on Law and Order. And about a year ago, I saw it on YouTube. Somebody sent me this and said, Is this you? And I was like, How many Fuck. fucking things did I do? Netflix has two things I, I'm, I'm on. Netflix, somebody emailed me the other day and said, Joey, I was watching something, and you came on Netflix. Yeah, you were on one with Felipe where you play a cop. Yes. <laughs> That's a horrid, <laughs> horrid movie. <laughs> that was a Nick Tutorial specialty. Oh, uh, no, you look you, like... You gotta bless Nick. Uh, you gotta bless Nick Tutorial. Well, what, what, was he like a screenwriter? Nick Tutorial got these poor Filipino family that wanted to make movie buck buck. Because <laughs> he don't give a fuck. <laughs> Nick Tutorial. He don't give a fuck fuck. <laughs> Nick Tutorial is a fucking savage. I, I will tell you that about him. That's what made me fall in love, and that's why I put him on the podcast. Because when Nick is determined to do something. He bites into it in New York style. But there's always a by the way. Yeah. It's always on your behalf. But you're happy. Like for that movie, we got SAG 468 oh. a day. Like oh, wow. 468 a day. What does that mean? 460 bucks for eight hours? Yeah, 460 for eight hours. It's usually scale was like whatever scale is now. And they feed you and all that shit? They do the same scale. It was only 469 a day. I, I didn't even have to audition. He told me to grow a mustache, so I couldn't grow a mustache, <laughs> so I had to put a fake one on. <laughs> Did you trim it? It is just the worst thing you've ever seen. The director had a wig. I remember it now. Oh, my God. The director had a wig, <laughs> but it was mixed with his hair, and the wind was uh, blowing. Another place where the wind was blowing, and there was a Nick Latour special. His whole family was in the movie, you know. The cousins, the Filipino family was in the movie. It was fucking hilarious. We, you know, like I said, he paid us. He, you know who I met on that? That was very nice. The best part about that whole fucking shoot was that I got to meet that dude that came out of prison on The Sopranos and caused a lot of problems. Aprio. Aprio? Not Jackie Aprio. I don't know who. Not Jackie Appeal, but Route. Again, go to YouTube, please. Why do you got to aggravate me? I'll give some shout outs while you go to YouTube. Look at <laughs> Sopranos, uh, Gandolfini's best scenes. Let's give a shout out to my girl, Lizzie Durazo, having a hard time. She wrote an article, met it to BuzzFeed. I retweeted it, Rogue, and everybody retweeted it. How about Ty Galberry, Nathan Cox, Bird Snake Brown, Chris Gonzalez, Will Brown, down there in Sydney, Evan Mason, 32, and Resilient Castaway. I love you motherfuckers. Don't forget, Stand Up Live in Alabama, March 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, and then Levity Live in Nyack, New York, March 21st on a Wednesday fucking night, 8 o'clock, bitches. If you, right there, that dude, the seconds, put that right right there, that dude. 
This was the funniest thing I did on this movie was I hooked up with this dude. Oh, yeah? He was cool. What was he? The producer? No, 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 no. Who the fuck is yelling? Your tenant? Go fast forward there. This, this guy here was a bad. He's in some fucking old school movie, right there, right there, right there with the umbrellas. Click it backwards. Click. Keep going. Right there. Right there. Everyone's got a story about why they should go to the head of the line. I've been in line for ten fucking years. Him. My uncle's just asking for what my father would have given him if he was boss when Richie got out of prison, and it had nothing to do with they were brothers. You respected my father and you respect Richie. Those who want respect, give respect. See, he just told you to shut the fuck up. And he told me to go fuck myself. Him. Alright, bro, we spent three days together. The first day he was talking about he didn't get high or whatever. I dropped the medible on him. I <laughs> fucked him up. This is way <laughs> before. This they were was legal. This is when you didn't know for sure. Uh, like people, how strong it was. Yeah, people were putting Xanax in them and shit. Uh. You were getting fucked up, Jack. I gave him an edible. He came back the next day. He's like, where do you get a medical marijuana license? I met him. Oh, my God. <laughs> is, that, is that why he got killed off the show? Did he get him like addicted to weed or something? He couldn't remember his lines Bro, anymore. We got, we got so fucked up on that set. But the director had the worst wig ever. But Felipe, the producer, fell in love with Felipe, so he invested in Felipe's movie. Oh, okay, was he like a sheriff in that movie too? Who? Felipe. Because he had a hat on too and shit. Yes, he was a sheriff in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it is the, the worst. Of Pico movie. Elisa. It is the worst movie of all fucking time. But you know what? You what? guys would be good, like in a cop, do like a lethal weapon with you and Felipe? No. Who's he going to run after? <laughs> you I, mean, get, I can't run nobody down. That's never going to work. There's a scene in fucking in Lethal Weapon where he runs from Hollywood and Vine to the 101 <laughs> North in three minutes. Nobody could do that. We don't like a skateboard you, you or something. Watch that. See, it's interesting that you live like for me and Lee. We're from somewhere else. So when you watch that, like we, I loved watching SWAT, all those movies that they remade because they shot them in my neighborhood when I lived in that neighborhood. Oh. Like Pretty Women. All right. If you watch Pretty Women now, you're like, what the fuck? LA, Hollywood, there's still places that are, you know, yeah. that place ain't there. No. I don't think it's there. But th th that location is still like everything's still. When they, oh, there's a movie called Valley Girl about a girl who lives in the valley and dates a dude and they go into Hollywood. It's one of my all-time favorite fucking movies. It's a great movie with Nicolas Cage and the blonde chick disappeared. But they, if you watch it, they show places and you just like do pause. On Ventura, which is under construction, they closed it down. I don't know. It was disgusting. Like, Dupas was fucking huge back then. Was that a club? No, no it's a breakfast it was like place. a breakfast place. Uh, but at that time, see if there's the a diner. clip for Valley Girl. See if there's a clip. Valley Girl, this, uh, 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 I've done the world and where were you? I've seen the difference. And there's I got to see it. Matter. What year did it come out? Bro, 80 fucking two. <laughs> <laughs> hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Cosine. <laughs> That's a foundation credit right there. Lee. <laughs> Drop it foundation. I forgot what I'm supposed to look up. <laughs> <laughs> Valley Curl. <laughs> 1982. <laughs> That's five, Lee. Where did you that's five. <laughs> Should I spell 1982 out, Joey? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or can I just use Valley numbers? Girl, capital letters. I'm going. V A L L E Y, girl. G I R L. Uh, and they'll come up like a song or something. Watch. <laughs> hey, Lee, you don't I even smell that fart. It was loud, nah. but it, it, your, your bark was loud, but your bite wasn't vicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I still got it, people. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. Still, still humped it. Oh my god, Lee! I did that once when I was a tweaker. This this girl was like, uh, 
<laughs> send me your number. <laughs> and I spelt it out. S E V seven one. Again, Valley Girl. Why why is it Valley Girl? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? You know why it's Valley Girl. <laughs> All right. That's it right there with uh, Yeah, Nicholas Cage. Classic. Nineteen eighty three. Bro, this was this is still one of my all time top ten movies, bro. There's there's like ten scenes in this movie that destroyed me. And the fucking father is the chef on uh, Apocalypse Now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He plays a stoner with the mother. And she's a hippie. And Nicolas Cage is fucking tremendous. See if you get the volume on this, Lee. And how, how long is it going to take to get to the meeting? What's, <laughs> what's the problem? You're in charge it's of the meeting. You know. Ow, dang me. <laughs> Look at all these players. Like, that's the mall, Lee. That's the mall right by your house. Yeah? Oh, is yeah. Is it still like right. that? No. Look at it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we look at that, Lee. That's the fucking mall by your house, Lee. She's out there somewhere. This is the story of a boy. Oh my god, I get a movie. This is one of my all time favorite movies, dude. Down what? Down here. Because they're from the valley. And these guys are from fucking Hollywood. Look how cute this girl is. When I was 18, are you kidding me? This is my fantasy, guys. That I was going to come out of here and meet a fucking regular white girl and live a normal life and shit. And look at what? Watch Hollywood. Look at Hollywood. Look. Damn. Damn. Look at Hollywood. Look. I'm not getting out of this car. All right. Like the girl from. the car. Save the radio. Then they go to Hollywood. He takes a girl from from the valley, from the valley to fucking Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? That's what I do to Charles. I bring them down. Yeah, here. you bring them down. Then they hated her. Her girlfriends hated her. She changed up on them because he changed. And the people who try to pull them apart. Like, don't you think they have parties over there? Oh, where at the zoo? It's one of my all-time favorites. Right? Could scar her for life. This dude was a big star. Look at what they are, Sherman. For life. If you think she's confused, you should see her father. I'm together now. Look at him. Be right there. That's the dude from Apocalypse yeah. Now. Dog. I'm telling you, this is a good fucking movie, dog. Fuck yeah. Julie's cool. Brandy's I'm gonna watch high. this shit. She's from the valley. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> looks like a winner. Yeah. Oh my god, this is a She's fucking. From the valley. This is the shit. Is this in 3D? No, but your face is. <laughs> this is the shit, dog. Told you. Damn, the soundtrack song. looks bad. Oh, as no, fuck. no, this is tremendous, dog. And it's getting better all the time. There's nothing you and I won't do. Are you fucking not? Right here, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. There's even movie clips. You want to watch it? No, I want to sit here and look at you. Yeah, I want to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you Damn. That hot dog on a stick. That's the fucking... Okay, that's where we go now, Lee. Yeah. How many times have you been there with Paula? You know which one I'm talking about. Yeah, Riverside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where we go. I used to live there. See? That's Van where the Nuys first, that's where my, the, the office okay. at my house was. Awesome. <laughs> Julie, like, don't be so greedy. You know, save some Were stuff. Were white girls like that when you got here? This is 1983. I, I got here in oh, 90. 2000. Okay, 97. I can't even believe you could brag. I didn't even know girls talk like this. I didn't know nothing. I believed it. <laughs> I believed it, though. Yeah. I'm from Jersey. Yeah. This was my fantasy to come out here and meet one of these broads and hang out <laughs> and fucking go to the valley and go to Hollywood. They go to a bunch of fucking cool places, man. And that's what happens. They go to the beach and she meets fucking Nicolas Cage at the beach. And then Nicolas Cage won't leave her alone. He hooks up with her. She breaks up with her boyfriend. And then fucking all her friends turn on her. The, the dude with the red shirt. That's her boyfriend. Oh. The three little punks. Straight up busters. See, but she dumps him for fucking. Uh, Look at his lame ass. So all the girlfriends are in love with the dude with the red shirt. What's your problem? What's my problem? Try two days and no phone call. Look, I'll see you guys at the bus, okay? Okay. 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 So all her girlfriends want to suck this guy's dick. <laughs> <laughs> she got the Woody Wood Pecker pin though, dog. I mean, well, she sucked dick. She's a cute girl. She's a virgin. Here. 
This is what you want. See, she's done with him. Damn, gave him the look bracelet. At, look at dog. Look at dog. Not look at dog. Cool, Julie. Like look I at the devil dude with the blue and white shirt. Who else is there? Oh, the Val dude can touch me. I mean, she must be really freaking out. This so, is crazy. Was Hollywood like the ghetto to the valley? I, I didn't live here. I don't know. It was like the valley must have been. You know, I read something interesting the other day. That one, they banned. Uh, they banned. Uh, what's the dude that the, I went to the one man show? When they banned Lenny uh, Bruce. Lenny Bruce. Oh. From all the clubs. In the valley? No, they banned them from everywhere in the country. Okay, I know that. The only place he could work out was in the valley. Oh. In the San Fernando Valley. How fucking weird is that? Like, this is, there was a bunch of strip clubs up here. <clears throat> and up here, he could be liberal. You know, up here, he could be free. He wasn't in Hollywood. He wasn't around uptight people. Yeah. He was up here, and he just... Uh, I just read this maybe on Wikipedia maybe a couple weeks ago. No, no, last week, I went to the one-man show. So it had to be a couple of days after that. Oh, I was yeah. up late one night, and I just read up about him. Oh, shit. So it was pretty interesting. That the, the valley was... Look, I watched this when I was, like, 19. And it was a fantasy of mine. Like, I didn't... I, I, bro, at 19, there was no comedy yeah. in my life, George. Dog, I Comedy think. was the least thing on my fucking mind that I thought and about. I know. I know what you... I remember, remember... You remember that movie, Just One of the Guys? You know who's in that movie? Uh-uh. My friend Georgie Kolodinsky. Oh, yeah? My brother. Nah, that was my movie where the girl fucking cuts her hair, becomes a dude, and writes for the school paper. He has, they shot that in New Jersey, and he was in high oh, school. Oh, they did? That was his claim to fame for about four years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lee would have been the guy that brought the pets in the shower and shit. That he had a scene in fucking, in fact, let's call him up and see what he says and shit. <laughs> Watch, he'll die. That's crazy. This is crazy. Watch, just to show you people. Uncle Joey ain't fucking around. Connected. Connected. Man, I'm fucked up. That shrooms was nice. Yeah, no, no. When you smoke those shrooms, it's a fucking killer. Dog. That's a different high. Look at Lee. He's looking at me all weird. He took like 10 hits. He never even knew. <laughs> he kept looking at the wrong hand. You don't know I'm a magician from fucking death. I had already mixed it in, plus I put it some in the, <laughs> in the edible, too. I sprinkled this. I stuck a stem in the edible. You know you got to watch me like a hawk, Lisa. I, Super magician. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, this shit made my tooth hurt again, but it feels good. It was funny. Uh, Ali Sadiq's friend last night, as the podcast ended, just got up and said, can't, can't control those edibles, man. <laughs> can't control those edibles. Watch, we'll call him up and say, he better fucking answer the phone and shit. <laughs> and none of them would be pissed off. He always answers. It's got to be late. Huh? What time is it here? 9.30. 9.30. It's 12.30. He's either at wow. his girlfriend's house fucking doing something he shouldn't be doing. I'll keep calling him until he picks up. You know what I mean? I don't give Your a phone has been forwarded to an automated voicemail. You better pick up that phone, cocksucker, because I'm going to call you back. <laughs> here we go. Watch. Bam. Boom. I'll call him too, though. No, we'll torment his fucking <laughs> life. He won't know what the fuck hit him. See, Lee, this is old school shit. Back in the days, you would call until a motherfucker answered. I will fucking call you until I'll dial 911 on your ass and make him go over there. You'll answer that door one way or another and shit. You know what I'm saying? That's how we used to get your attention in the old days. They didn't have fucking caller ID. No. Nobody had caller ID. What about that fucking emergency breakthrough? I've, I've never used... Who used an emergency breakthrough? What's that? That's where it's, you pay the... Like, you push a special number, you call the operator and tell the operator, hey, I'm calling a phone that doesn't have double line, so I need to do an emergency breakthrough. I guess it's, they charge $5 Oh, my to your God. Bill. That was a long time ago. Yeah. That's right. That's way before Lee's time. Lee wouldn't even understand that. <laughs> so let's say you were on the phone with your girlfriend. Okay, and I kept trying to call your fucking phone, and your phone was busy for an hour, and I was your dad's boss. <laughs> I, I could call the operator and go, I need to do a fucking emergency breakthrough. And you'd be talking to your girlfriend, yeah, so maybe we'll go on Yelp and <laughs> pick a Mexican restaurant. Let me tell you something. That operator would come on and go, excuse me, is there somebody named Lisa Allen here? Yeah, somebody's trying to call your father. Get off the phone. Yeah. 
and they would fucking call back and tell your father they've been calling for an hour and you get your fucking ass whipped <laughs> because the operator would throw you under the bus and shit. You think I'm kidding you? Huh? That's old school, Lee. Can you imagine up on the phone with your little girlfriend talking about sucking the tits on Saturday after the dance? And all of a sudden the operator cuts in and goes, excuse me. That's old school shit. Oh my God, I forgot all about that shit. That's that that's that original fucking stalker, huh? Emergency break. I still remember going and paying the phone bill. I've done that too. Like in nineteen like in that I started paying the phone bill for my mother when I was about seven. In Union City the bar phone bill. I'd have to go around the corner. And then sometimes she'd make me walk from North Bergen up that hill to pay the fucking phone bill when it was close to a place called the Four Star Diner. Across from a theater, I'm thinking of doing. This is in Jersey? In the future, yeah, in Union City. And I used to pay the phone bill there. That was the weirdest thing. And you got had to go in there and get the longer cord. Like if you talk shit, because the cords were, look at us, how free oh, we are. Oh, I today. understand you exactly. So in those days, let's pretend I shared a room with Lee. I don't want Lee listening to my conversations with my girlfriend. So I would take the phone, drag it as far as I could, and then I got a longer wire from the phone to the other end of the fucking connector uh-huh. so I could walk 20 feet with it and talk on the phone so Lee wouldn't hear my conversation. How crazy was that? You used to have to get a long cord. I remember those. <coughs> you know what I remember, like, Joey? Like I- this general, like you'll never, do you remember a phone, Lee? Oh, yeah, of course. I had I had a rotary phone in my house. I'm not that young. I didn't know for sure. Yeah. I, the fucking operator would call. That's right. Yeah, I, I remember when I would love my parents to take me to the bank to cash their check because they had a waiting lobby. They had crackers, cook, like the, the, the taffy crackers, like cookie. Me being Mexican, I never had a cream puff before. Lollipops. Yeah. Had, everybody had lollipops when you were a kid. If you walked into a business... The other day I bought my, my daughter a jacket. It was, the place is going out of business on the way out. She goes, does your daughter want a lollipop? And I looked at the lady. I liked the lady a lot. I really liked how she treated my daughter like mm-hmm. old school gangster. Yeah. Like old school gangster. Anybody could sell clothes. Anybody could sell you clothes. Have you ever been, have you ever been taken by a clothes salesman? Yeah. By a real clothes salesman? I mean, where he takes you to the point where you sign up for a fucking credit account. <laughs> like, bro, there was a dude one time that took me to the cr- cleaners. And I was so overwhelmed by him that I became his friend. The sad thing is I owe him 200 bucks since 1995. He won't return my calls. I've tried to be hunting him down for 20 years because he was a very, very, very dear friend of mine. And but he sold clothes to you? He was a clothes salesman. And he was from, he was a Jewish kid from the Bronx. Bronx. And he was the epitome of what a salesman was. Smooth, like made you feel good. You'll never understand what a real clothes salesman is. Like when I was a child and I came from, you know, and I lived on 205 West 88th Street. On 86th Street and Broadway, there was a... Uh, a men's clothing store, a shoe store called Briggs. And from time Damn, that to time, sounds old. From time to time, as a goof, my mother would take me in there to measure my foot and get shoes. And it was an experience. Like it wasn't going to Foot Lock when some kid just throwing six <laughs> not pad six and a half in front of your feet, <laughs> and you got to try them on. It in the seventies, they did everything for you. They like tailor measure. Oh my God! They sat down. First, they got you up and they measured your foot, and they fucking took your de- dead fucking sock off, and they put like a party sock on. What Spanish people call party socks, the thin sock. Yeah. And then they took different shoes out. The guy would come back with eighteen pair of shoes. He was gonna sell you something. Yes. But when you got up, how he put the shoe on, how he used the shoe horn. The look, his touch. I remember that. Dad. How he would say to you, you look beautiful with that shoe on. And you went in there to buy one shoe, but you ended up buying three. Because he's a salesman. He knows how to make you feel well. So, I go 
with my daughter to the park, and we meet up with her, my friend, who I'll see tomorrow at ballet. And then every Saturday is what I do. I take, you know, and we take them to a park and they play, and then we mm -hmm. go to eat somewhere and we hang out. So we went to eat pizza, and afterward, I wanted to eat a yogurt. And I went and got a frozen yogurt because you could put a bunch of fruit in it. And you could feel full for Weight Watchers. So I went to the yogurt <laughs> store. And that's what I do. I get like a little tiny bit of yogurt, but the rest is strawberries. I don't get a lot of the... And the bananas, if the bananas are fresh. I get bananas and I, I mix it up. I love bananas. Oh, with yogurt and fucking just a plain low-fat yogurt. Have you ever given me like a cascaron? A cascaron. Uh, What's that? Isn't that what the Cubans fry the bananas? <clears throat> uh, chicharron is a fried pork... Uh, un tostón. Oh, yeah. Tostón is how Puerto Ricans say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's had fried bananas. I took him down there. He's lost his fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> He's had Cuban food down there, though, Cochinito. You know how I do. What were we saying? We were talking about something. We were talking about the salesman, how he got you shoes. Then he would put your shoe on. But with this, the is, this is what happened. Like, my daughter's five. You know, we're eating yogurt. And I see her looking at something. Now, every time I go to that yogurt spot, it's at night. When I get bored at night and I got points left, I go over there so I fill up at about 8 o'clock. I just take a ride over there stoned. I double park the That's car the by the And I go in there, and that place is open till 11. I didn't know that the Lee told me. But when you go in the daytime, there's a, a woman's clothing store there. But half of it is for kids. And I'm talking about badass shit, like just banging. Yeah. So we're sitting there eating the yogurt. She goes, Dad, look at that jacket. And I look and I go, holy shit. That's a badass jacket. And, I, and she goes, when we finish the yogurt, can we go in there? And I go, yeah, we go in there. And we went in there. And, bro, she went in. And the lady fucking got up. And instead of coming to me, she went right to my daughter. That's the sales. She goes, how are you doing today? Fine. Yeah. And she goes, is there anything you're looking for? My daughter goes, hmm, that jacket. <laughs> you know it was quick. Are you watching like an amazing... I'm watching this whole interaction. How happen. your daughter's acting? Yes. My <laughs> daughter comes in dressed to the nines with a bow on. <laughs> you know, looking beautiful as she does with that little look. And the lady came up to her and just she just made her feel like usually Mercy will stand next to me and look at me. Not this time. Mercy looked directly at her. She goes, how are you doing today? Good. There's something I could show you. She treated Mercy like an, like an adult. She yeah. There's something I could show you. And Mercy was like, mm, that jacket. And she goes, okay, come with me. Let's take this jacket off you first. Oh, my God, you have such beautiful hair. Let's push it back. Ah, uh, yeah. And then she walked her over, and she took the jacket off gently like it belonged to a fucking princess like <laughs> she lifted it off yeah. like, hold on are you ready are you ready and mercy was like yes 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 and she goes hold on let's put it on in front of the mirror that was it yeah <laughs> <laughs> they don't do that at marshall's no way they don't do that nowhere do you understand me no, so I'm, late, and I'm standing there right now i have an anxiety attack like, this is it this is the beginnings of how it starts <laughs> Now, the only reason why I went in there, because on the sign, the place is going out of business. Mm -hmm. And I know it's 50% off, plus I can negotiate. Oh, yeah. Which I never do, but if I, I, I had like 60 bucks cash in my pocket, right? Like, I expected it to be like fucking 80 bucks or something. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, there's one of those three-way mirrors. Oh. She put the jacket on Mercy, then she took her hair, then she locked it up on Mercy, and it fit her like a fucking glove. Fitted. With a little fucking button on the side. Did you see it, Yelly? No, I haven't it's seen it. It's fucking yet. beautiful. So she puts it on. It's a mink, pink mink. Oh. Like a princess thing. It's beautiful. And she goes, what do you think? And Mercy looks at She goes, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> she did. Uh, yes, she did. That's how easy it was. <laughs> and I looked at her and I go, are you sure this is what you want? And she goes, yeah. Do you think mommy, like, you know, she worked me a little bit. Do you think mommy? I go, mom, I'm not going to say nothing. But just tell her you need a jacket to go see grandma. You know? Yeah. And she goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll okay, work. To go see grandma. 
It's like, was there anything else? Now, there was another dress over there that I knew fit and was gorgeous. My daughter looked at it, and she goes, nope, I'm good with the jacket. The lady pushed a bunch of buttons, bro. It was $38. No way. I spent $38 on stupidity every fucking day. I got a jacket. Straight up. The lady looks at my daughter. She goes, it's hot out there. Do you want to wear that? My daughter goes, yes. My, the lady looks at me. She goes, good choice. <laughs> 90 degrees, and he's my daughter, <laughs> fucking mink on, walking around like Elizabeth Taylor up in the fucking valley on fucking Burbank, on the Low Canyon Boulevard. We walk in the house. My wife tries to like scare her, like boo, and she goes. My wife's like boo. What do you have on? She goes, look at my new jacket to go see grandma. And all this shit. My wife just looked at me like Jesus fucking Christ. And her tape was $38 fucking dollars, and the lady gave her all the attention in the world. And as we're walking out the door, she goes, excuse me, young girl, do you want a lollipop? And she looks at me, she goes, I got a lollipop. Yeah, I'll take a lollipop. And she walked up to her, and she gave her a lollipop, and I go, give her a hug. And she gave her a big hug. Solid. Solid. She walked out of there like a little young lady. How That's she's good. supposed to act. Yeah. Listen, bro, I was learned I was taught to interact early on. My mother made no no distinction of that shit. I had to act because I was always around adults. Mm hmm I know what you mean, dog. I was always around adults at that age. My father had died when I was five. Like I was watching Bronx Tale. Fuck. Two weeks ago it was on AMC three times in one week and I kept watching it. And I still remember like being a kid and walking to the corner to get an Italian ice and being five. Like, would you let your kid walk 50 yards on Tremont Avenue in the Bronx in 1968? This is 19... They knew who you were. They didn't know who the fuck I was. I was just a little fucking scared kid with a dollar bill in my hand. Running. But your mom... My mother, my mother would stand there and go run to the corner, get the Italian ice, and run right the fuck back. Don't make me <laughs> fucking want to catch you. That, that's a training. She was exactly doing what you're supposed to do. Like, hey, I'm watching. If someone comes, I got your back. But besides that, go get that shit. Come to me and t tell me, would you take your daughter right now? And let no, her not right now, but in our time. I, uh, it doesn't matter. We're like, boys. I'm, I'm petrified. Yeah, my mom no, was like no, that. No, 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 no. My mom would have done that with me whether I was a boy or a girl. Yeah? You know, my mom, yeah. They believe in toughening you up at an early age and making you the value of money like she knows. Something happened. I told her you got to work three hours. And guess what? She's been asking me lately. Oh, yeah? When can we go to your office and do the work? <laughs> I'm in here and just fix the albums and paint yeah. some pictures for the wall. Ah, oh, fuck yeah. I got a 10-year-old, Joey, and she's getting at that age now. Like, we went to Target, and she wanted these overalls that were kind of short and shit. And she looked at me, she goes, I don't think you're fair. I'm like, what do you mean I'm not fair? She goes, you asked me for my opinion for how I want to style myself. And you know what? Me not being understanding, I said, you know what? We're not going to hear none of this shit no more. Let's go. We're leaving. <coughs> so we're waiting in the Starbucks line, and I try to give her a hug, Joey, and she brushed me off. Like, get the fuck off me. And it hurt. I was like, what's wrong? She goes, you still think I'm five. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, you you don't let me be. I'm going to be in sixth grade next year. Look, at, show me pictures of her friends with the shorts on. And I was like, all right, cool. I didn't know my daughter was slick like me, dog. They were the shorts, like you see how my shoes they the if my they fold over. Yeah. She tried to fold them up two more times to make them shorter, like her friends and shit. And the teacher called me up. She goes, "Hey, I know how you are." She she wore them to school, but she had a backup pair of pants in her backpack. And that's what pissed me off. I go, "Hey, man, if you were down to wear those overalls." With no backup, I would have believed it, but you knew what you were doing was wrong. Why did you bring the backup pants? Like, you know what I mean? You left the house with those pants, and then you put those overalls on? It, it fucked me up, dog. It made me think, like, damn, who's my daughter trying to impress out there? Is there another sixth grader and shit? Is there fool? So I just had that crazy talk with her, letting know how guys are. I said, look, your daddy was one of those bad guys. I know how we are. You have to protect. It's crazy, dog. She's 10. I'm flipping out. Is that the age? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what the age is anymore, you know.
Yeah, she has a cell phone now. All that shit. It's a different world out there, you know? It is. The pressure. It's a different fucking world. I can't imagine. I cherish the days I have with her now. She's five. Oh, yeah. That's why I work the schedule that I work. Mm -hmm. That's why I act how I act. When I put the commitment I can into it, I try to make these events and... You know, they switched them. They they called me today at five to switch my day tomorrow, and I said, <laughs> that "Poor best." I said, <laughs> "I said, do what you need to do, but I gotta be up here by four fifteen. You know, to take us fucking to this ballet thing." It's That's what's up. That's what's you up. Know, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. If I'm in town, this is what I need to do. And Saturdays, I need to give my wife a break. Mm -hmm. Plus, I need to see her on Saturdays. Hell yeah, get Do your own run. Four little hours, three hours, you know. And, and dog, let me tell you something. I was wiped out this Monday. I kept thinking, God damn, I'm getting fucking old. But I go, no, 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 no. I spent, like, Sunday. I fucking took a nap, and I woke up at four. And she was right there waiting for me. She goes, Daddy. Are we going to go to the park? And my wife wow. died of laughter. <laughs> Called you out. So I took her to the park and we walked. I go, let's walk. Fuck it. You know, I'll get some Weight Watcher points. Mm -hmm. so I just walked with her. And I got to the park and there was really no kids there. So guess what? Guess who has to pick her up 18 times? Yeah. And put her on the zip line. <laughs> Thank God she's not Lee. I couldn't be able to fucking walk if I had to pick Lee up and put him on the zip line. <laughs> Then you got to push them on the double barrel swing when they get their buddies to do it. Bro, I was putting the tens on my back every day the last fucking... Every, this morning I had them on. grinding it off. Because it, it was too much, pushing both. It's fucking... Uh, if, if you come to me and say, what would you rather do? Go to jiu-jitsu two hours or spend four hours with your daughter at the park? You're like, I don't think about that. Yeah. yeah. I You're 55, right? Room. Yeah, 55 on a, a Monday. Nah. 50 fucking 5. Damn. So I'm trying to recover my body. Like, I, no matter what I do, whether I go to jiu-jitsu or do kettlebells or whatever, I got four days a week in me. Yeah. Maybe three. Like last week I worked out five times. And I'm going to pay for that. Not this oh, yeah. week, but the next. So maybe like when, when, I'm, when I go to Denver, I just do body weight shit. Because you can't breathe anyway. They ain't Get it out. You're doing yeah. Plus, I already got people that they're planning on assassinating Lee. Like they're like, this. <laughs> we're gonna give Lee some fucking edibles. And they're just some gonna American put Ninja tribe. Lee has no idea what he's <laughs> going into next week. No. <laughs> Lee has no idea, Lee. Hey, Joey. You know. You know what I noticed in my forties, man. That like, when in my twenties and thirties, I I I slept a lot, and I'm not sleeping as much as I used to. Like this last night, I had a dream, and when I woke up from that dream, I carried into the same dream twice again, dog. And it was just, I rented out my back house to a pastor. I didn't know he was a pastor, and he found out that I was fucking strippers and smoking weed in my house, and that fool ran through my house. So I went back there and I shot his family up. It was, was a dream. <laughs> yeah. You got problems. <laughs> I, hope your, I hope your probation officer don't hear this. <laughs> no, dog, but I kept waking up and going back into the dream. It was weird. Shooting him again and again? Yeah, it was like Pulp Don't fiction. tell me how to live my life. Yeah. You know what I had, you know what I had last night? I, we, we, got, <laughs> we got fucking high last night. And for some reason, when I got home, I got fucking higher. What? I had the fucking. And I, went, I went crazy. I bought this box of Weight Watcher. Protein bars, they're two points a piece. I ate the whole fucking box. I got so fucking high. And then I just did some crazy shit last night. Like last night I was out of my mind. Like I don't I don't know what the fuck was in those edibles last night. I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do tomorrow. <laughs> so I lay I went to bed. I was so high I laid down. It's like eight times the recommended dose and one is what Who gives a fuck. You gotta take a chance. <laughs> But I went to bed and I had restless, restless legs. Oh. When your legs get, <laughs> my legs kept fucking going crazy in the middle of the night, dog. I couldn't keep them still. I so fell asleep on top of my bed, <laughs> on top of the sheets, backwards with the lights on. I just got home and fucking passed out. Oh my god! Dog, I had a fucked up day yesterday in Hollywood. Ugh. I did the Stellar Adler Theater. They yeah. put a show there. It was. Dope, packed, killed. 
did 20 minutes, killed. Came outside, thought I was smoother than the motherfucking parking attendant. They towed my car. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. So I asked, the, you know, you know, security guards always show up after your shit get towed. He came out. I told you not to park there, dog. I was like, homie, you didn't say shit. I even asked you if he was cool. He's like, I thought you was in the white one. You look like you have that car. That car you got towed didn't look like yours. So it, I went to the fucking tow station. Where is it off a of Millstone or something yeah, right here? Right there in Hollywood. Then. Yeah, 10, 15 Millstone. Yeah. I called them. They're like, your car's not even here yet. Like, I missed it by five minutes. 282 to get my fucking car. Then I go, to, I go to the comedy store because, you know, I need a drink. I need a fucking. I almost got a shit towed again, dog, because I was so heated. I forgot to pay the meter. Oh, my God, George. Yeah. And then I had that crazy dream about killing the priest that lived behind me. Yeah, it's time to go to talk to somebody. Maybe we can get you. <laughs> Maybe we can give you a number. <laughs> no, I don't even fucking dream. I get so high. <laughs> I go to sleep and I wake up and I realize where the fuck am I, and what do I have to do? Do I have to get on stage tonight? Do I? Am I running late for a comedy show? Like, were, were you I get so fucking high sometimes? Yeah, I was gonna say, were you like that in the old days, Joey? What do you mean? Because I remember sometimes they'd be like, "Hey, dog, Joey might not remember if he's Felipe." Would be like, "Fool, I forgot to remind him, man. I don't know if he's gonna come tonight because he forgets." Like, would you forget to go to shows because you're so fucked up? No. It depended on how my day went. It okay. If I had cash. Oh. If I, if I had a check in the mail, like for 300 from residual, <laughs> and it was Wednesday, and you had a gig for me in Orange. Uh -huh. And it was $20. Yeah. And I already got my Coke for the day. I wasn't showing up. I had an audition <laughs> early. Something was going to happen, dog. You're not going to believe it. I got a flat tire on my car. <laughs> a tree went down in L.A. and shit. Like the that. bus driver got pulled yeah, over. Every, every, you, you, my cocaine use made me so independable. Like the 2005 to 2007, the shit I was doing was just... Did, did you ever feel like... You know what I, You know what fucking made me stop a little? As I felt a heartache come, a heart attack come, but it was like, I had, my heart was hurting, but then I could feel like my kidney mad at my heart, like, hey, bitch, I'm more fucked up than you. Why you want all this attention? Like, do you, do you ever get those sharp pains? As I was getting them in my spine and my neck. Okay, like, what's that from? That, that means something's coming down. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing, and this is not going to be good. Okay. Your body giving you a warning before you wake up in the hospital one day and they're like you OD'd or you had a mild heart attack or you had a heart attack or you had a stroke or you know that that that's what that is. It must have happened four or five times to me. Yeah, like in, when I, in the it's process, scary, huh? Yeah, like once you took your dad went to work out. I was hitting the bag and it was early. I'm working on. I'm working on. I'm working on. I'm working on I'm doing what the guy's telling me to do. And dog, there was a point there that I was like, whoa, 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 hold on one second. <clears throat> I felt shit missing beats. Yeah. And I just walked and breathed and focused on my breath, you know. And uh, I, when I was doing drugs, there were nights I thought my heart was gonna fucking blow up. I fuck yeah, dude. I know Jesus that feeling. Christ, that's, that's just, you hold it too, huh? That's You're just, even holding it. You ever been in the bed laying and the bed, the whole bed is vibrating <laughs> from your heart? I've been in the bed that you have no idea yeah. what it's like to lay in a bed and the bed is vibrating from your heart. Yeah, and your heart's going. Boom, <laughs> oh my God, boom, you're right boom, on. Boom, boom, and it's fucking pounding in your chest. Your dick can't get hard. No. You're fucking higher than fuck. You got another two or three grams in the living room. You got another quarter ounce in the car. And you ain't stopping. Your heart is fucking pounding. And it's telling you another one. And you're trying. No, you're smoking cigarettes. You're up there. You have no idea. Yeah, I was laying on a blanket on the floor. And I thought that I was on a bed and it was pounding. Like the blanket made me feel like I was on a bed pounding. Scary shit. So what do you got going on, G? Man, uh, we really scare these poor people. You know? <laughs> yeah, We're supposed yeah. to tell them prison stories and we didn't say one, but who gives a fuck? <laughs> fuck it. We, we had a good fucking fuck time. Yeah. You drank a Modelo. Hell yeah. Chilada. Chilada. You got to see your boy Lee. Fuck Lee got yeah. to smoke single some Lee. mushrooms Lee's and shit. single now, right? 
We single. He's fucking done. That's it. He's slinging dick and giving out chocolate bars. <laughs> He's got a hot date tomorrow. I heard through the grapevine that things are happening. For That's him. what's up. We got I know. You. I, I wish. He's going to a show in Venice. You know what? Let's take him to the strip club. Tonight? Not tonight. No, I'm too fucked up to go. Hold on. There he is. Yo. Yo. You all right? Yeah, dog. I got a guy here that's saying that one of his favorite movies growing up was just one of the guys. And I told him that that was your big screen debut and shit. You know what I'm saying? No, baby, it's you. Oh, baby, it's you. All right, sorry about that. I thought you played... <laughs> I thought you played the. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I'm over here trying to promote you, get your movie and shit. And you got to fuck it up with Baby yeah, It's You, cocksucker. I didn't get any credits in that one. That's the one I played the pizza delivery guy. And which one? None of them. What was it? What, what, what was, who, who's in Baby It's You? I thought you had to see him with Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr.'s first. Right, and you did an eight ball with him. Then you went to the strip club and he oh, bought you a cheeseburger. He was like, he was like fifteen years old. He was no boss. All right, wow. Wow. Vincent Spano, Vincent Spano, and Rosanna Arquette. Yeah, the stars. Vincent Spano, like good looking dude. He was also Alphabet another City. Alphabet City. Look at George Kalodinsky dropping knowledge on a fucking what's the name of the framing company in Cliffside Park? F and D frames in <laughs> Cliffside Park. If you need your framing done, they got a bunch of Joey Diaz memorabilia in there. <laughs> if you call them on the fucking hotline, ask for George. He's got merch for you to buy. He's got shit from the longest yard and many other sets that I burglarized. All right. Oh, my God. Right there. You don't have to go to eBay or nothing. George got the goods. <laughs> don't, and if he ain't got them, don't worry. He'll get them. George is going to have 18 million voicemails tomorrow. Who gives a fuck? Mind your business, you. I'm trying to blow him <laughs> up here. Like I thought I would. All right, I'll call you tomorrow, my brother. Stay black. Love you. Love you. All right, bye. <laughs> hey, I would have called you back, too. Like, yo, dog, what's up? It's late. I know you oh, called. Oh, no, you got to call people late and let them know. You got to keep them in check from time to time. Late, I, early. That's I'll call my up. buddy fucking the one that stutters. I usually call him at this time of the night to wake him up. It's hysterical. <laughs> He just stutters his way into your fucking heart. Tell me this good man. <laughs> Tell me this mama Luke called me Jesus Christ. Holy Christ. <laughs> so I saw that in August you're doing the fucking yeah. jam with fucking Sky. I'm doing a funk fest in August at the Anaheim Honda Center. That's Saturday, August 4th. I'm doing it with George from Curious Entertainment. It's going to be Morris Day in the Time, the Bar K's, Daz Band, Confunction, Climax, Original Mary Are you Jane? hosting it? I'm hosting it. I'm emceeing it. In between? In between, dog. And everybody does two of songs. Yeah, no, they, they do. Hits. No, they do like eight. And if you only have two, you go in the beginning. A lot of them, like Howard Johnson, Sky, Evelyn Champagne. Yeah, Sky's got two jams. Evelyn yeah. Champagne got three jams. Yeah, it's yeah. It's a shame. But you know what they do now is they sing other people's shit. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> why are you bothering me for? If I'm yeah. Hear, I'll get League all fucked up, and he can sing me a bunch yeah. of songs for free. Also, February 27th, I'm at the Brea Improv headlining with Sam Tripoli. This is what I'm talking about. We're just talking about two guys that don't quit, that you're the dude. That's why I love you. Yeah. That's why I'm happy you could show up on the show tonight. Not only that, tonight's the first time I get to introduce Vincero Watches to my audience. Listen, you know I don't show up with the fucking Fugazi shit here. Everything I try to run to you people, I try to check them out. See what's going on with them. You know, Lee does a little background check, the best that we could do. Lee will do a little Yelp review and he'll tell me what's going on. And this watch impressed the hell out of me. Like I said, people send me stuff all the time. And when I opened this watch and I looked at it, uh, at first I got the Gorilla uh, wrist, so the, I needed a bigger band. And guess what? Vincero sent it to me with no problem like two days later so what i did was i put uh one band on one watch that they sold me and i put this metal watch on the silver on white vincero i love it i love it 
and you guys know I don't wear a watch. It was time for me to be a professional. I got 20 watches in the house. This is the one I wear from now on. Lee, have you seen anything else on me since I got this watch? No. Why? It looks good. People have been complimenting me on it, and it's just a nice watch. It feels great. It's comfortable. I like your watch, too. Thank you. I don't know what it is. I don't know what I pay for. I don't know what you pay for, and I don't care. I'm just telling you, if you're looking for a watch, you know, you're tired of choosing between luxury, styling, and high-end quality at an affordable price tag. Vincero Watches wants to help with timepieces that will expertly blend style, timing, and class with a price tag you'd never expect to watch built this way this well each collection is bold modern and guaranteed to elevate your game okay they feel great on your wrist and honestly i receive more compliments like i said than any other watch i've ever put on that's why i don't wear them guys if you're in the market for a great watch i like to direct your attention to the sweet piece on my wrist i absolutely love this vincero it's a dope brand because they make watches that look and feel luxurious while still giving you an outfit that's distinct. It's unique. You look that ensure you get complimented by people. And that's why I'm wearing the, 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 the watch. That's why. I, like I said, I picked out the white on white. My personal favorite, though, is the black silver. Because you can wear it with, any, with anything. From really casual clothes to streetwear. Watches like this, they retail for 500 these Vincero watches, they start at $150. They have over 6,500 five-star reviews and another 400 five-star reviews on Amazon. Well, they partnered with Class Factories and only manufacture in small batches so that you get ethically produced products subject to rigorous quality control standards. Listen to me. I'll tell you this. This is an ad, and I really enjoy wearing this watch. That's why I'm t I, I'm bringing attention to Vincero. So whether you're attending an extravagant E3 gala, or whether you're going to a Dooku premiere, Vincero has the versatility that you need. There's a discount code, guys. Vincero's great quality. It's an incredible watch. Wear them in the presence of your wrist. These little watches, they rock. Don't just get a watch. Elevate your game. Go to Vincero Watch. Go to check out Vincero at getthewatch.net right now. Listen, you're going to get a nice watch anyway. This watch looks good, feels good. It's beautiful. The craftsmanship is beautiful. And guess what? They're affordable. And that's what you're looking to get, right? And now I'm going to get you 15% off the entire purchase with promo code CHURCH at checkout. It's time to step up your watch game. Go check out Vincero out at getthewatch.net. Listen to me. Women watch this type of stuff. You're a young man. You're trying to impress people. You're trying to get a job. For the first interview, you got to wear one watch. For the second interview, you got to switch it up. So people see that you're a classy guy. Now, you don't have two, two three thousand dollars to throw away on a watch. And I'm not asking you to throw. That's why I'm directing you to. Get to watch.net right now. Like I said, Vincero's going to give our church, the family, 15% off the entire purchase with promo code CHURCH at checkout. Please, go to Vincero Watch right now. Right now, go to get to watch.net and take a look. I'm not kidding you. It's a great deal on these watches, all right? I want to thank George Perez. I want to thank my man, Lee Sayat. I want to thank Vincero Watch at get to watch dot net right now and i want to thank you people for being a great audience and for letting us come into your fucking homes once a week and torment you with sickening and disgusting fucking stories that's what i love about you people got heart you're the last real americans you like the rest of these whiny motherfuckers that pop up with a story every four days about something that happened who gives a fuck the people are fucking dead but now you got to speak your peace to me Get the fuck out of here. See, the people who listen to this shit, you people are normal people. Who gives a fuck? Stay black. Uncle Joey loves you. I'll see you in Denver. I'll see you at the Ice House. I'll see you at the Comedy Store Sunday night. I'll see you in Denver next week. And then I'll see you fucking savages in Alabama. The K-10 Planet in the house. Second show Friday night. 915 show. Look at Lee's face. He's fucked up how I like it, baby boys. Have a great week, all right? Stay black, and most importantly, happy Valentine's Day. Have a great weekend. 
I'll be in touch via fucking Periscope. Go to joeydiaz.net for church t-shirts. I love you.